We're following up with our proof from the last video where we proved that the rational numbers forms a countable set. And in this case, we're gonna prove that the real numbers forms an uncountable set. So in other words, there is no one-to-one -one and onto function from the natural numbers into the real numbers. Okay, and we're gonna do that by way of this thing called the nested interval property, which we proved a couple of videos ago. And that goes in the following way. So let's suppose for all natural numbers k, we have a closed interval, which we'll call ik, and that goes from ak to bk, where ak is less than or equal to bk. And so, in other words, this is going to be a non-empty interval. And we have this nesting of the i's. So we have i1 contains i2 contains i3, and so on and so forth. And we can write this all at once by saying that i n plus 1 is contained within the interval i n, and that's true for all natural numbers n. And the conclusion of this nested interval property is that the intersection over all of these closed intervals is non-empty. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and look at the proof of the fact that the real numbers is uncountable. And we're gonna do this by way of contradiction. So let's say, by way of contradiction, suppose, that R is countable. But this means that there exists a bijection F, which goes from N to R. Great. And then we can go ahead and set Xi equal to F of I. And what that tells us is we have this nice way of listing the elements in R. So in, in other words, we can say R is equal to X1, X2, X3, X4, and so on and so forth. Where this is the image of one under this bijection that we have, and the next one is the image of two, and so on and so forth. Okay, good. So now what we want to do is construct some closed intervals, and we'll do that in an inductive way. So for our first step, we want to take I1 to be any closed interval not containing X1. So um, you could write down maybe a formula for this closed interval if you wanted to. So notice it could be the closed interval from x1 plus 1 to x1 plus 2. But we'll just say that it's any closed interval not containing x1. So maybe let's make a picture. So let's say we have our real number line here. And then let's say that x1 is right there. Then we might as well take i1 to start here, remember we call that A1 and end here. So there's B1. So in other words, this closed interval um, right there is I1. Okay, now we wanna define I2. So we'll do that in the following way. So let's set I2 uh, to be any closed subinterval of I1 not containing uh, x2. Okay, so let's see how that would work. So if x2 is outside of this interval i1, then we can just let i1 equal i2. So that's good. But let's say x2 was right here. So in other words, x2 is inside the interval i1. Then we would want to take i2 to be something like this. So we'd say this one is A2 and this one is B2. And so this interval right here is I2. Okay. And that's something that's possible to do regardless of where X2 lands. So if X2 lands outside of the interval I1, we're okay. But if X2 lands inside the interval I1, we're still okay. And now we want to continue with this iteratively. So we'll just say continue iteratively. So in other words, we're going to define i n plus 1 as a closed subinterval of i n not containing x n plus 1. Great. 
And so that's our iterative process for constructing all of these intervals. Okay, I'll clean up the board, I'll put a summary at the top, and then we'll finish the proof. So let's see where we are now. So by way of contradiction, we supposed that the real numbers was countable, and we listed all of the elements in the real numbers as follows. So we've got x1, x2, and so on and so forth. And then from this list, we constructed a sequence of nested closed intervals. So we let i1 be any closed interval not containing x1. And then inductively, we let i n plus 1 be any closed interval of i n not containing x n plus 1. And so now notice that the hypotheses of the nested interval property are satisfied. So we've got this nested sequence of closed intervals, um, which is exactly what we need. So now what we know is that the intersection of these closed intervals is non-empty. So let's go ahead and write that down. So now by the nested interval property, we know that the intersection over all of these closed intervals is non-empty. But then since this intersection is non-empty, that means there is an element in this intersection. But these are all sets of real numbers. So what that tells us is that there exists x, which is a real number, such that x is in this uh, intersection of these closed intervals. Great. But then by our assumption that the real numbers is countable, we know that this x is one of the numbers on this list. So uh, just to spell that out, we know that x equals xm for some m in the natural numbers. Great. And so now let's look at these two facts next to each other. So let's look at this one versus this one. So let's maybe number them one and two. So notice that one implies that x is in i n for all n in the natural numbers. So that's what one gives us. But then two gives us something that is contradictory to this, and that is by our inductive construction of these i's. So two implies that x m is not in i sub m plus one. But now notice that these are contradictory statements. Here we have x is in i n for all natural numbers n. In other words, x is in i m plus one. But then on the other hand, x is not in i m plus one. So that leaves us with a contradiction. And what do we contradict? We contradict our very first assumption, which was that the real numbers was a countable set. So we are only left with the possibility that R is not a countable set. In other words, it's uncountable. That's a good place to stop.